I have sex with both of them. With Mr. Morton? And Mrs. Lemon. And his girlfriend? Yes. Oh! So a threesome at the same time or you have two separate relationships? Threesome at the same time, separate relationship. If I don't want to have sex with her and I want to have sex with him, that's what happens. We've got Ms. Luce bringing Mr. Zuniga to court, claiming he's the daddy of her baby boy, Marley. But hold on, it's not just about the baby. She's also hitting him up for over $12,700 in baby expenses. Mr. Zuniga is having none of it. He's convinced he's not the father and he's even brought the big guns. A lie detector test. Buckle up, folks, because this case was a wild ride and we're about to dive right in. Ms. Luce, you are suing the defendant for $2,716.86 of back child care expenses for your son, Marley. Yes, Your Honor. You say there's no need for a paternity test because you're certain he is your baby's father. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Luce dropped the bombshell that they only had a fling for two and a half weeks. Talk about a juicy start. That's right, folks. Just a fortnight of fun and now we're in paternity court. Mr. Zuniga was throwing shade left and right, claiming Ms. Luce was easy and that he'd always thought he was sterile because of sports injuries and past relationships without any baby outcomes. Talk about a plot twist. Mr. That's Zuniga, do you have any hand. other children? No, ma'am. I've always thought I was sterile. You do? Yes. Putting the long relationships aside and trying to have, you know, kids with them and consulting doctors. I did a lot of sports. I've had a lot of sports-related injuries. But wait, there was more! Ms. Luce admitted she did the deed with a few other dudes after Mr. Zuniga, but also insisted that during their brief fling, she was all about him. Mr. Zuniga wasn't buying it, though. He was convinced she was cheating the whole time, and even said some random lady told him that Ms. Luce was getting busy with her husband. Scandalous! There's this one instance where this lady came up to me and she told me that while I was with her, she was cheating on me the whole time with her husband. And he looks just like the father. Red hair and blue eyes. And just when you think you've seen it all, in walked Mr. Zuniga's own mother, and she was on Team Loose. Yeah, she was absolutely furious at her son. According to her, Mr. Zuniga was just like his dad and needed to step up. She even had pictures to prove the baby looked like her son. Drama level? Sky high. They have the same features, the dark circles. My grandson was born with jaundice, Your Honor. No, and my out, son was born with jaundice. I came my out son with has a muscle spasm in his eye. Brown hair. My grandson brown has eyes. a muscle I spasm just like in his my eye. Father. I look no, this kid looks nothing like Yes, him. because my son was is 50% Mexican. His dad was 100%. But Mr. Zuniga was standing his ground. He was confident that the baby looked nothing like him and that he had his eyes on another potential daddy with red hair and blue eyes. The tension is so thick you could cut it with a knife as they go back and forth with accusations flying faster than a cheetah on a treadmill. And all the while, Ms. Luce was holding on to hope that Mr. Zuniga would come around for little Marley. The more I see him grow up, the less he looked like him. Because he doesn't matter. know you. And he doesn't have to look like you. You don't look like me the more you grew up, but I knew you came from me. Yeah, but I came straight from you. There's no doubt in that. It doesn't matter. Then, bam, the lie detector results come in. And let's just say, things were not looking good for Ms. Luce. Deception indicated. But the judge wasn't having any of their nonsense. She ordered a DNA test on the spot, and we were all left hanging as the two stars of the show were whisked away for the big test. I order both of you leave here immediately, submit to the testing, and return to this courtroom where we will have the results. Are we clear? Yes, That's why I'm Jerome, here, please Honor. escort them out. Court is adjourned. Fast forward, and we were back in the courtroom, hearts were pounding, and we were all waiting for the DNA results. Would Mr. Zuniga's suspicions be confirmed, or would Ms. Luce have the last laugh? The tension was through the roof. Ms. Luce pleaded with Mr. Zuniga, reminding him of the good times, how he promised to be there, but he wasn't having it. He he was still hung up on that lie detector test. You know, figure out this you were kid's there mine before. or not. You need to step I up and be there up. again. Well, I will if it's my kid, but I don't believe you. Everything shows so me. So, Mr. Zuniga, let me, let me understand. I, I see you all are very frustrated today, um, and I believe it was due to the results of the lie detector test yeah. that I that revealed in our previous session. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. And then, the moment of truth. The results were in, and, well, folks, this one was a coin flip. Is Mr. Zuniga the father? Is he going to have to cough up the cash for those baby expenses? Will he step up and be the dad he promised to be? Or will he run for the hill? The drama never ends in this court, but the truth always comes out. Mr. Zuniga, you are his father. Oh, thank oh you, God. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> my grandson, you say you're sorry. You, you need to tell your son. <laughs>
<laughs> Who's look at him. Are you telling me sorry? Look at him. Yes, look at him. Wait, Maybe that's yours. Wait, you lied. We've got a doozy for you today. This next case was nothing short of a soap opera. So there was Ms. Holthouse marching into the courtroom with a mission to prove who the daddy of her three-month-old son Zayden was. But here's the twist. The potential daddies were a guy who's totally out of the picture or B, and this is true, her own mother's boyfriend. The crowd couldn't believe their ears. You confess it's either a man you shared a sexual relationship with who wants nothing to do with your child or the defendant who happens to be your mother's boyfriend. Mr. Shinewald, the mother's boyfriend, stood there, owning up to his fling with Ms. Holthouse, but was adamant he wasn't the father. And get this, Ms. Holthouse's mom was just outside the courtroom. She was steaming and ready to drop a bombshell on this whole mess. Mr. Shinwald revealed how the affair unraveled. It all started with a text gone awry. A simple typo led to flirty texts, and next thing you know, they were at a park making babies. Everyone was horrified, and Judge Lake was in utter disbelief. I had not really thought about it until I got a phone call from him. And he was talking about um, having sex and going somewhere. I snuck out of my grandma's house that night and we went to a park. And what happened at the park? We had sexual relations. Ms. Holthouse confessed that she sent the text on purpose, even with her mom sitting right there. That's some next level daring. And when Mr. Shinwald called to confront her, they decided to sneak out to a park and well, they got it on. I said she wanted to go out and have a good time with me. And you said, Sure. So how long did this sexual relationship last? It was about six months. Six months? Yes, yeah, sure. Did your mother have any idea this was going on? This secret rendezvous lasted for six whole months, and her mom didn't have a clue. But how did Mama Bear find out? When Mr. Shinewald and Ms. Holthouse's mom got locked up and threw some sneaky moves, Ms. Holthouse ended up confessing to the affair. And yes, they were still hitting the sheets during this time. Gross. I told her about what we did, and I never said anything, and she said that he told her about what we did, and he never said anything. And who confessed? Actually, I confessed. You did? Yes, ma'am. Jump to when Ms. Holthouse found out she was pregnant. She had no idea who the daddy was, but knew it could be Mr. Shinwald or another guy who was just not interested in being a dad. And get this, she had to sneak out yet again to tell Mr. Shinwald he might be the father. Oh, the drama. Mr. Shinwald and another guy. And... I had to sneak out and go tell Mr. Chenault that it could be his, maybe. You were honest. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Chenault. Now, hold on to your hats. Ms. Holthouse's mom has a 10-month-old with Mr. Shinewald, which means if he's also Zayden's dad, her baby sister would be her son's half-sibling. Is your mind blown yet? Cause mine sure is. Ms. Bogardis, the mom, finally enters the courtroom and she's visibly shattered. She had suspected something fishy when her daughter would get all cozy with her boyfriend at every opportunity. And she's been with this man for two decades. He was there when she was a toddler. Can you even fathom that? Now you have a 10 month old child by Mr. Chanel. Yes. And you may have a three month old grandchild who's also your child's half sibling. That's correct, Your Honor. But wait, it gets wilder. They all live together, with strict rules to keep Mr. Shinwald and Ms. Holthouse from getting too close. It's like they're living in a reality show, with no talking, no texting, and no alone time. It's insane! We're not allowed to be in the same room together. We're not allowed to talk or text each other. We're not supposed to really even be around each other. And if we are in the same room together, she turns down the TV so, so she can hear the conversations that we're having. Mr. Shinewald and Ms. Holthouse are lying all over the place, but Judge Lake is not having it, and neither are we. She's calling their bluff, saying they haven't been intimate since September, and we're calling foul play too. The tension is palpable. So Judge Lake throws down the gauntlet, offering a lie detector test to see if they're still getting frisky, but guess what? They shut it down. What secrets are they keeping from us, folks? Are we willing to to consent to the lie detector test on the question of whether or not you all are still sleeping together? No, Your Honor, I won't. I'm sorry? No, Your Honor, I won't. How about you, ma'am? No, Your Honor. Anybody have anything to say? No, Your Honor, I really don't have anything to say, Your Honor. Anybody? No, Your Honor. 
All right, well, that's your business. As the case comes to a close, we're all perched on the edge of our seats. Will Mr. Shinuwal turn out to be the father, or will Ms. Holthouse's son be left fatherless? Is little Zayden's dad the same man who fathered his aunt? Or is there another twist in the tale? It's the moment of truth, and the DNA test results are ready. Mr. Chanel, it has been determined by this court. You are not his father. Thank you, Donna. I can hear you breathe a sigh of relief, Miss Bogardis. We've got another wild and unbelievable case from the vault. And trust us, you're gonna wanna grab your popcorn for this one. The tension was thick as they stepped into the courtroom and Judge Lake was ready to unravel this mystery. You claim Mr. Morton fathered your seven-month-old son, Aaron, while in a relationship with his current girlfriend. Yes, Your Honor. You say the only reason he denies paternity is because his girlfriend turned him against you because she's been unable to conceive a child with him. Yes, Your Honor. So, we kick things off with Ms. Parker pointing fingers at Mr. Morton, shouting from the rooftops that he's the proud daddy of her seven-month-old daughter, Erin. But here's where it gets bananas. Apparently, Mr. Morton's new squeeze did a little whispering in his ear, turning him against Ms. Parker because they couldn't make babies together. Talk about a plot twist, right? Anytime I wanna have sex with him, I'm gonna have sex with him. You understand? Like, I was vulnerable, he called me, so, you know, we did what we did. So, hold on, you have a child with Mr. Morton Yes, I already. have a five-year-old son. And he's not the child in question. No, Aaron is. We're off to a quick start as Ms. Parker spills the tea on her tangled love triangle with Mr. Morton and his lady friend. Threesomes? Yep, unbelievable, right? And we're only getting started. I have sex with both of them. With Mr. Morton? And Mrs. Lemon. And his girlfriend? Yes, yes, your honor. Yes. Oh, so a threesome at the same time or you have two separate relationships? Oh, you know, threesome at the same time, separate relationship. If I don't want to have sex with her and I want to have sex with him, that's what happens. Fast forward, and it's time for Mr. Morton to give his testimony. He hits back with a denial so loud it echoes through the courtroom. He's playing the this timeline doesn't add up card, and the court is suddenly a detective agency probing into the nitty gritty details of Ms. Parker's love escapades. Talk about a showdown. This could be your child. It could not be my child because the timing is not right at all. I'm not tripping off of that. I know that that's my son's father. I know. He looks exactly like my other son. The heat is turned up by several notches when Ms. Parker and Mr. Morton spill the deets on their romantic escapades. Unprotected encounters? Check. Miscalculated due dates? Oh, you betcha. Apparently, Mr. Morton, despite his initial doubts, was with Ms. Parker during the kid's birth, playing Mr. Daddy. So what's with the sudden change of heart? Hold on to your hats, folks. Ms. Parker is suing for childcare expenses, and Mr. Morton's wallet could take a hit. The guy walks up to her, they talking and everything, and he swears up and down, Aaron is his. She had to keep reminding him that it's not yours, boo, it's not yours. I had sex with you after he was already in my stomach. Exactly, I said. But you told us that you didn't have Now here's where it gets really spicy. Enter Ms. Dunlap, Mr. Morton's mother, armed with her own testimony. She's had front row seats to the father-son bonding extravaganza and swears that baby Aaron is her grandchild. Meanwhile, Ms. Parker was eyeing those child support checks once the DNA results dropped. And can we talk about the judge having to be a therapist, highlighting the messy relationship saga between Mr. Morton and Ms. Lemon? Unresolved issues, anyone? For our support system, it was me and my daughter, which is Eric's sister, and Mr. Mother. Morton's sister. And her mother. And, excuse me, I'm talking. It don't matter. It does. It don't. So therefore, Did you just own. let her disrespect your mother? Yeah, real bad. I'm yeah. sorry, I had to catch that. Come again? Huh? And just when we thought the curtain was about to close, the judge threw in some relationship advice like Oprah on steroids. She urges the lovebirds to untangle their mess for the sake of the kids. But hold on to your popcorn, guys, because the real cliffhanger is yet to come. I have to ask this. Are you all gonna continue to have this unprotected sex? No and sex. No sex, Your Honor. He's good. He's good with his with his wife. <laughs> How long that's gonna last? <laughs> Feel me? I mean, well, what's, what, what's me? the point of you He's not in what we have? He's much. He's I mean, good. Ebony. Judge Lake drops the paternity bomb like confetti at a New Year's Eve party. Mr. Morton's life could be about to change. Cue gasps, cheers, and probably a mic drop. The DNA results are in, and Mr. Morton is about to know his fate. Mr. Morton, you are Aaron's father. Thank you. I told you. Like, I'm not no. Come on. Thank you. I need that paper so I can go down child support tomorrow morning when I get up. <laughs>
<laughs> Ms. Parker, you came to court with a suit in the amount of $2,047. Mr. Morton is, in fact, baby Aaron's biological father, which means you are legally obligated. Let's jump into a wild case that had everyone in the courtroom on the edge of their seats. It's Sutton vs. Smith, folks, and guys, this episode was a roller coaster of emotions. So hold on to your seats. This one's about to get bumpy. Miss Sutton, you say you believed you were in an exclusive relationship with Mr. Smith until you got pregnant and discovered he was living a double life. You say the defendant has denied your daughter, Kaylee, and you are in court to prove he is your child's father. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Sutton gave her testimony first, claiming that Mr. Smith was her one and only until she got pregnant, and bam, she finds out he's leading a double life. Can you believe it? But wait, there's more. Mr. Smith and his mom, oh boy, they come in swinging calling Ms. Sutton a pathological liar and accusing her of having a whole list of partners. Mothers say Ms. Sutton is a pathological liar whose list of sexual partners extends well beyond just you. You admit to having two sexual encounters with the plaintiff, but say your relationship was anything but exclusive. Now, Mr. Smith admitted to a couple of hookups with Ms. Sutton, but insisted that their relationship was as exclusive as a public restroom. Not at all. And Ms. Sutton? She's not having any of it. According to her, Mr. Smith was living with her, coming home to her every night. But then, the plot instantly thickened when she tagged him in an ultrasound pic on Facebook, and another woman slid into her DMs. When I post my picture of my ultrasound when I got pregnant with my daughter on Facebook, I tagged him in it, and that's when she messaged me, and she told me who she was. By my understanding, when she was pregnant with their daughter, he said he, he wasn't with her. He said he would just want to be there for, for the baby, and that was it. This other woman? She's Mr. Smith's other baby mama, and she's telling Ms. Sutton that Mr. Smith was supposed to be with her. And Mr. Smith, his defense is like, whoa, hold up, what about Jimmy, Joe, and John? Yup, he literally said that. My cousin phoned us, something like, um, is DZ around you? And she gave me the phone, she like, uh, and she said, oh, uh, I'm pregnant by you. I'm like, you pregnant by who? She's like, by you. I'm like, him, hey, you lying. You gotta be lying. I'm like, what about Jimmy, Joe, and John? But Ms. Sutton? She was not backing down without a fight. She was shouting at the top of her lungs, letting everyone who could listen know that her baby looked just like Mr. Smith. The audience couldn't help but laugh when she pointed out that nobody in her family has a forehead that big. Oh, the shade is strong. You knew for a fact she was sleeping with other people? Yes, yes. Were you, Ms. Sutton? No. You've been denying my baby from day one. From day one, when she looked just like you, ain't nobody in my family got no big forehead like that. Ms. Sutton's dropping bombs. She says Mr. Smith didn't show up for two DNA tests. Mr. Smith clapped back, calling Ms. Sutton ghetto and nasty. Ms. Sutton's mom also jumped in, calling out Mr. Smith for being bought with cigarettes and beer. But hold on, folks, because Ms. Collie, Mr. Smith's mom, has got her own tea to spill. She accuses Ms. Sutton of sleeping with their family members and even catching her in bed with one. But Ms. Sutton came back with her own clapback. The lease was in her name. She said that's supposed to be my. Hold on, just just hold on. Just recently, hold on, Re hold on. Just recently, she just stopped fooling with one of my family members' husband. Okay, but the lease is in my name, isn't it right? The tension was through the roof. And just when you thought it couldn't get any crazier, Miss Sutton started talking about how Mr. Smith would sweet talk her from jail, promising her the world and how she loved him, but he denied her and their baby. The courtroom had turned into an emotional battlefield and Judge Lake was trying to make sense of it all, telling Mr. Smith he's got to face the consequences of his actions. Miss Sutton was clearly hurting and Mr. Smith was worried about losing his seven year relationship if the baby ended up being his. I don't, I loved him. I I loved him with all my heart. And for him to deny me and my child, like that's something serious. Cause okay. he's lying to his family, lying to the other baby mama, lying to his mama. Now I just wanted to understand where this was coming from and now I do. But then the moment of truth arrives. The DNA results are in. And let me tell you, you'd think it was an Olympic swimming contest with all the breaths being held. Would Mr. Smith's fears become reality? Was he the father of Miss Sutton's daughter? Would he have to say goodbye to his long-term relationship? And what about Miss Sutton, who had been raising Kaylee all alone for three years? Would she finally get the help she needed? Let's find out. Mr. Smith, you are the father. Oh, thank you after three you years. Three years. Okay, three years. Three years. All right, Miss Sutton. I want to see my baby. Three it's okay. years. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. 